Sophie and welcome back to the Be Nerdy Booktube channel and today I'm here with a review but it's something a little different. So I'm reviewing an arc, well the arc I read for the month of March and this video was inspired by a conversation on the uh, page turners by BuzzFeed Facebook group where uh, I saw someone say they didn't trust like ARC readers reviews because since it was an ARC people would feel kind of obligated to give it a higher rating and let it get away with all sorts of stuff just because they got the book free and I actually commented saying well I don't think it's true and I'm usually harsher with ARCs than I am with books I buy myself and it got me thinking like well most of people think that's true, like uh, readers are just uh, more relaxed, so per se, with ARCs just because they get them for free. And I really wanted to come clean, sort of, and explain to you my thought process behind the reviews I give for the ARCs I read. And I wanted to make this kind of a series, so every ARC I read, I don't read a lot of arcs, so every arc I read, I will have its own video uh, explaining why I have uh, given three, three stars, four stars, five stars, two stars, one star, whatever rating it is, and explaining my review. So the arc I read for the month of March was Only Daughter by Sarah A. Denzel. And I knew the author. It was not a new author to me. And I had enjoyed her previous book. It was really good. It was called The Silent Child, I believe. It was following a mother who lost her child and then got it back like a bunch of years later. But the kid didn't talk. And I really liked it. And in Only Daughter, we're following a mom. Uh, her, she's Kate, Katie. And she finds out that her daughter committed suicide or supposedly committed suicide they found her daughter's body uh, in the bottom of a quarry and she's just like really messed up with the situation as you can probably tell and it is normal to be but i i gave it a three out of five stars and i'm i'm gonna tell you why uh in in detail without spoiling, okay? I, I'm trying to explain the things that happened and what I liked and what I didn't, but without telling you the story. So, first of all, let's go to what I didn't like. Or, yeah, let's go to what I didn't like. Just because I, re I really don't want to end this book, end this video, like, bashing on a book. That's not my thing, so we're going to go bad things first, good things after. So, uh, Sarah's, Sarah Denzel's writing style is, it, it, it's really good, I like it. The thing is, I felt it was super similar to her first book. Like, it's not just, oh, it's her writing style, it's normal that the writing seems similar. No, it felt like it was almost word by word similar. And... I don't want to read like three or four books by one author and they all sound the same and read the same. That's just, it's not what I want. And uh, the second thing was that Katie as a main character, the mom, was so unlikable. And it's not... Okay, not all characters have to be likable, okay? Not all main characters have to be relatable or good or whatever. The thing is, Katie was a mean person. She was a mean person. And uh, what we're, with what we're uh, led to believe like by, uh, through the whole book, she, she's mean. She's mean. Like, even though what happened happened that way and if you've read the book the book is already out so if you've read the book you know exactly what i'm talking about like even 
if what happened happened that way, she she punished herself more than she should have, and she created this whole bitchiness and this whole bitchy attitude through uh, like throughout her life and her years and whatever like all the way growing up she created this attitude based on one thing that i mean it was bad but given the situation i think it was logical i mean i wouldn't blame someone for that happening when 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 that happened like that i know this is so vague but it it's a situation that if you only know like the very end of the situation you you think like oh f this is screwed up like hell to the no she's just not good and then you learn the whole story and you're like oh well it it was a tough situation and maybe if if any of us would have found ourselves in that situation maybe our actions wouldn't have been so different i mean i speak for myself i'm in that situation i wouldn't have reacted maybe as well as she did like come on she stepped up for herself and something ended up happening yeah so i'm not gonna blame myself just yeah i did something bad in self-defense but yeah no no i think it was just an excuse to give her a motive to be a bitch like bitch with a big b because honey no 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 i really didn't like her and she she was really really bad with her husband like the, the guy brought her from the ground up and i'm not saying that she should have owned him or like oh she's the woman and he's the man and she should just uh worship his feet or whatever no I mean, the guy held her up by giving her uh, an independence. Like, she was independent in the sort of way. But she should kind of thank him and not be so mean and so bitchy. My main problem with this character is that she's a bitch. All throughout the book. There's no character development or whatever. There's bitchiness, less bitchiness because, you know, her daughter just died so we need to cut her some slack. And then her bitchiness level raises up to the roof. My third problem with this uh, book is the ending. And not like the main plot twist or whatever. That, that's that's something on itself. I'm going to talk about it. But the ending itself, there's, there's a situation that happens. And it is, it would be nice. It would be fulfilling for my heart at least. To actually know what happened between the couple. There there are some problems and there are some things they need to work through. And then they kind of like unfocus from that situation. To focus on solving uh, the suicide. Or if it was suicide to prove if it was or it wasn't. And then you go back to the ending to that same situation. And you don't know what happens. You, you know that oh yeah we're going to work through it. The end. What the hell? I need to know. I need to know. My heart needs to know. That bothered me. I mean, I was like 10 minutes staring at my tablet like, What the actual hell? No, my heart didn't like it. Some people may like an open ending. I don't. I, I really don't like that because I keep imagining both situations. And yeah. Nah. Nah. My problem with the plot twist. Um, I mentioned this on my Goodreads review. And if you follow me on Goodreads. You may have read it already. Is that you aren't able to solve the mystery by yourself. I mean reading the book. Like you're reading it through Katie's eyes. And you're not able. It's not one of those situations like uh, in The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Where you're relieving the same situation. But you you can gather the clues yourself like you you mentioned the 
you can gather the pieces yourself. You're reliving the same day in that book, but you can gather the pieces of the various characters. In here, no, there's like one giant piece. Like, giant! And if you knew that, well, maybe you would have guessed the uh, perpetrator. Like, you would have guessed what happened. But... I'm not saying it wasn't suicide or whatever, just I'm not spoiling. I mean, there is like one giant piece to this whole situation. Because like after her daughter dies, uh, she starts getting like these threat messages. And we're trying to find out who it is threatening her. That's kind of like the main uh, drive of the plot. And we only know who that perpetrated is and what happened. Like why are they sending this? When we get this giant piece of information like, oh, wait, but actually that happened. And then you're like, oh, and, hap and that happens like 20% to the books. And I know it was really weird. Like there was a big reveal and there was a big situation and then there was calm and then there was another situation and then it was just confusing. Like, no, I, th I think that would have benefited of a straight line and maybe ending the scene at the end of the big confrontation just not moving it around more just don't poke what's dead and that was dead already like no things i liked um i really like the uh concept of we don't always know that person as well as we think we do. I mean, Katie starts investigating her daughter, like trying to find out going through her Instagram and Facebook and YouTube channel and whatever. And it, it is a fun concept, like how so much can be hidden and how much we hide, like uh, from ourselves and our friends and whatever, like throughout the social media and how like the images don't always correspond to the truth there was like this scene w with uh some threatening messages to the well dead daughter uh and she apparently had her perfect life life like picture perfect and whatever and it was it was a fun concept like how images can hide the truth and it is something that has been talked about on at least Instagram there are a lot of uh, youtubers and bookstagrammers and Instagrammers talking about like don't base yourself on the images you see it's not real everyone has a life and it's not always as glamorous as it might seem like there's a video of Lauren Z side and she like tricks her followers with a ton of pictures like that and it, it showed really well how you can fake stuff like that on Instagram. Yeah, I, I really think it was a fun concept for uh, Sarah to pick on. Also, I really like the subject of pressure. Like how uh, parent pressure can influence a child's behavior. I think it's it is, it is a reality. I mean, it it just is. Hi! My cat's over there. Like, he's just being cute. So, yeah, I think that was a... I mean, it was a, sp a specific point. And it, and it is a touchy subject, but I think it was really good. Also, I really like her um, investigation phase... Uh, writing i think it's really really good like really really good like you you can be i i the one that comes to mind is when she's following a certain trail for the messages and how she does it and how she looks for it and what she thinks about it's just awesome hi come here hi say hi this is Remy. He's just the cutest thing ever. And he was just passing by. And I grabbed him. Mm. Go on now. <laughs> Sorry.
he's just too cute i can't manage he's just mm, pure fluffiness anyway um as i was saying her investigation uh phase writing is awesome and i think it's really realistic like She's not one of those overpowered characters where it's like, I know everything and I'm just the smartest. No, she really needs to look and she needs to dig and she needs to contact people. And it, it's really, really, really cool. And given like the downsides and the upsides, I decided to give it a three. Like there was problems with the story, but I still f found it enjoyable. And it, it's not like the best story ever or anything. Like I said, those problems eventually affect the story. But I think it is a fine story. I mean, I read it. I like it. I'm not going to say like, oh, I love it. Or, oh, it changed my life. It's not like that. And maybe in another video, I'll explain how my rating system works. But... For now, that's what I'm going to say. I think overall, it was just a me, like a fine. It was fine. I enjoyed myself reading it. It had problems that still nag me to this day, but it was fine. Just fine. <laughs> so for the month of April, I still haven't filmed like my April TBR because I'm reading three books at the moment and I'm still trying to see what the hell. I'm gonna do till the end of the month, like, till Sunday, if I can finish, like, maybe one or two, ideally two. I am about halfway through Crown of Midnight, and I wanted to finish either uh, Taylor's Oldest Time by uh, Lise Braswell, I think it's her, it's from The Twisted Tales, is book number three, or Gemina, which is The Illuminate Files number two. And I'm still, like, juggling between them. And I wanted to see if I could finish some of them. Also, toying with the idea of making vlogs. Like, a monthly vlog or, like, a like weekly vlog. Like, my reading style or whatever. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when I post. I usually post every single week, every Thursday around night. Well, nighttime London time, okay? <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye!